Hey guys, welcome to Irish Medieval History. And today I want to cover a question I get asked like all the time. Um, I've been doing between living history, tourism, and now YouTube, but I've been doing this for about 10 years ish. And yeah, I, I've been doing YouTube for about two years, but even on YouTube, I still get asked the same question. And now that the Northman has become popular, um, fantastic movie uh, from what I've heard. Haven't seen it yet myself as it hasn't released in Japan yet, uh, but I am looking forward to seeing it. However, one question I get over and over and over again um, since forever is, am I a Viking? <laughs> and I will literally, so I'll be like in the middle of a tour and I'll get to talking to people and stuff, and they'll literally just turn around and say that. They will be like, oh, I recently got my DNA testing, and it says I'm 20% Viking, and I'm like, what do you mean you're 20% Viking? Like, what's that mean? And they're like, uh, I don't know, I actually have the results with me here, and they'll, sometimes they'll actually show it to me either on their phone or a piece of paper or something, because when they come to Ireland, um, they want answers a lot of the time. They're trying to find their family clans or their lineage or so on and so forth but one thing that really has them baffled is why does it say on this piece of paper that they think they should be 100% Irish which I'll get on to that in a second um, but they, they're wondering why it says 3% to 20% Viking which technically speaking is Scandinavian right and what you had clearly was the Viking Age so a lot of people in the comment section below may be already educated in this and it's not really who I'm trying to point to. I'm really trying to get to the people who just ask me on my own comment section randomly, they'll come onto the channel, um, they haven't subscribed yet, hint, hint, but they'll um, come onto the channel and they will just blame and ask me, look, uh, I've been getting 20% Viking, you know, what's going on here? And so I will send you this video and basically what I'm trying to say here is that 20% there, that's from the Viking Age. And the Viking Age happened between 793 to 1014. That was the peak of the Viking Age. And throughout that period, you had people from Norway, Denmark, and various other areas such as Iceland. Although technically speaking, by the time people move into Iceland, the Irish and the Norwegians and the Danish had already pretty much mixed together and the Swedish as well. And basically what happened is that in 793, a lot of people from Norway to start with start to move down from Norway into Ireland and they start to mix with the local population. A lot of people would turn around from the get go and say, well, all these uh, women and I just personally for me, it's just lazy. Um, they'll turn around and say that um, that all the women in this period were taken by force and forced into marriages. And that's not true. If you read Nile Saga, for example, I have it probably here somewhere. Anyway, no, it's the Orkney Saga. Anyway, regardless, they'll turn around and say that every single woman uh, was taken in Ireland and they were forced into marriages. And where that is somewhat true, it's not the entire story. You do have Scandinavians coming in and marrying into local population. In Scotland, for example, it does seem that they were marrying into rival clans. So where they were fighting one clan, the Norwegians would come in and marry into another clan in Scotland. And that seems to be the case as well in Ireland, that they're coming in and they're marrying rival families. Uh, for example, in Dublin, the Dublin area, they'll marry into Northern Ale or Brigga, um, but they'll go against Southern Ale and the families that live there. So it's quite complicated, actually. It's not a case of one of these quick Viking uh, videos you see on YouTube. You know, I'm silly YouTube videos. Or even a quick Google search where you will literally see these silly videos and silly things that say that pretty much 99% of the DNA comes from women that were physically forced. That's not the case in reality. What you have is, yes, true, a good chunk of women that were physically taken, but the rival clan then wants to marry into your own because the rival clan was doing the same thing. You see, the Vikings didn't introduce slavery into Ireland. 
uh, slavery was already there. And I can quickly remind you of that with St. Patrick. St. Patrick was, in fact, a slave taken by the Irish and brought into Ireland. The Vikings only enriched that and escalated it. So what you have is a very complicated situation. Furthermore, when I look at people's DNA results, they'll also see 3% Liberian. Now, Ireland, uh, Liberian, by the way, is uh, Spain and Portugal today. And Ireland always has had a very complicated relationship with Spain and Portugal. Um, pretty much a positive relationship, in fact. Um, out of all of our neighbours, Spain and Portugal has always had a positive impact on Ireland. Um, but in this period, it's kind of Ireland taking but never giving back. Um, and somehow the Spanish celebrating this which is strange, and I'll get to that now, right now in a second, and that is the fact that in this period, Irish Vikings, the Gaul Gael as they were called at this point, because as I was explaining there, you had um, Vikings that married into the local population or physically took women, but you also had Gaul Gael, Irish Vikings, with their Danish allies and their Norwegian allies, mercenaries that they would hire to take on adventures. They would go into Spain and they would physically take women. Um, now I know I was saying it's a bit more complicated in Ireland, but in this point it, it's pretty cut and dry that you did have Vikings coming in and physically taking women back to Dublin and selling them on the streets or keeping them for themselves. Um, I don't have to go into detail of what these men were doing uh, to these poor um, Spanish and Portuguese women, Liberian women of the time. But it mustn't have been nice uh, to be forced into relationships that they were non-compliant in. Uh, however, it must be really noted that the Spanish every year have a celebration in the summer where they celebrate Irish Vikings, the Gaul Gael, Danish Vikings and Norwegians coming to Spain and taking their women. Yeah, you heard it right. They celebrate us going into Spain and taking their women, so go figure. <laughs> it seems like an awesome celebration anyway, I'd love to join in. Please invite me sometime if you guys are listening. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> Although in England at the same time, the English monks, uh, the English, sorry, the English clergy are writing that the Saxon men need to improve their grooming because you have English women, on the other hand, Saxon women, who are willingly giving themselves up to Viking men of this period. And that's the period where you had the Gaul Gael, the Irish Vikings, you had the Danish Vikings, and you had the Norwegian Vikings. And to know that Saxon men were too smelly for their uh, Saxon women is quite funny. And uh, maybe I'll get a few Saxon uh, men right now getting a bit, wee bit offended on this and quickly typing away, how dare you write about this about my ancestors? Well. I have the proof, so <laughs> don't bite my head off too much. But yes, um, what you see is very mixed and match. And finally, and this one doesn't really come as a surprise to anyone, we have a bit of Scottish mix of DNA there. Of course, the majority of Scottish DNA comes in with the plantations much later on. But in this period, people are finding that the DNA is very blurred in Scotland. And that's because Ireland and Scotland is very close. Uh, first off, you have Gaelic culture from Cork all the way up to Inverness that just dominates. And furthermore, Ireland and Scotland are very, very close to each other, um, both physically and mentally. <laughs> Take that any way you want, really. I don't really mind, but it's all true. Um, but Ireland and Scotland pretty much continuously connected. So during this period, no surprises there. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I pretty much covered everything I need to. Hey guys, thanks so, so much for all the subscriptions this week. It means so much to us in Irish medieval history. Some of you guys were asking how many hours were left until we get paid again. And that's only 200 hours of viewing until we get paid again. Easy peasy, matcha cheesy. Other than that guys, ourselves in Irish medieval history and Denton's Tales will be going live on the 8th of May. The details will be down below in the comments section. Other than that guys, thank you so much for all the viewing and subscriptions and you know yourself like. Anyway, all the best.